Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the world's first mini PC powered by the Intel Core Ultra Series 2 Lunar Lake CPU line. They do offer this with a couple different CPU variants, but this one has the Core Ultra 9 and we'll talk about more of the specs in just a bit. But I've been really excited about this one because of said CPU. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I'm a huge fan of the NUC line that Intel used to run, but the torch has kind of been passed off to ASUS, so they're now making all of the NUCs. It's no longer known as an Intel NUC, it's an ASUS NUC, and I gotta say, from what I've seen so far, they've been doing a pretty decent job. Inside of the box, along with the NUC 14 Pro AI, we're going to get a mounting bracket. So this has actually got a locking system on it. You can mount this to the back of a monitor, under a desk, it's really up to you. And we also get a 120 watt power supply. When it comes to I.O., up top here, we do have a fingerprint sensor for easy login. And up front, from the left to the right, we've got our power button, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two full-size USB 3.2 ports, Thunderbolt 4, and of course, since this is an AI mini PC, we do have that co-pilot button up front here also. Moving around back, power input, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, another Thunderbolt 4 port, and two more USB 3.2 ports, but these are Gen 2, and the ones up front are actually 3.2 Gen 1. Something we've been seeing a lot from ASUS is a toolless design, even on their newer gaming laptops, which is something I personally like to see. We've got a little locking mechanism here, and we can actually pull the bottom off really easily. We've got a heatsink for the M.2, and I'd say the only downside about this mini PC right now is the fact that it only supports a single M.2 SSD. 2280 up to 4 terabytes. We can replace the Wi-Fi module here, but it already comes with Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, so there's not much of an upgrade on the market right now. But it's easy enough to get in here and upgrade that storage to 4 terabytes. And when it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, the Nook 14 Pro that we have here has the Intel Core Ultra 9. This is the 288V, 8 cores, 8 threads, and I haven't been able to test this yet. Got 4 performance cores up to 5.1 gigahertz and 4 efficiency cores up to 3.7. In my opinion, one of the best things about these new chips is the iGPU. It's the Intel Arc 140V, 8 XE2 cores, and this does clock higher than anything else I've been able to test here in this line, to 2050 megahertz. We also have an Intel AI Boost NPU, and all by itself it can do up to 48 tops of AI performance. 32 gigabytes of RAM at 8,533 mega transfers per second, and it's non-user upgradable because this is RAM on chip. It's actually inside of the CPU itself, so it's all built into one. This supports one M.2 2280 NVMe SSD, PCIe 4.0 up to four terabytes. We've got Intel Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 built in, and you can get this with either Windows 11 Home or Windows 11 Pro. So first things first, wanted to get into the BIOS to see if there's any kind of performance settings here. And it looks like I found just one for this Core Ultra chip. But if you're familiar with the older Intel NUX, you know that uh, this looks exactly the same. So ASUS has kind of kept that same BIOS from advanced storage, onboard devices, video actually. Okay, I don't want to. Yeah, so internal graphics, we're gonna leave that. Performance, nothing we can change here, but when it comes to cooling, We've got three options, Whisper, Standard, Performance, and I'll tell you, even in performance mode, this thing should boost up to around 35 watts. It's not a loud system at all. Uh, not much else here that we can actually use for performance gains. Basically, just that cooling setup right there, and this should uh, definitely keep it nice and chilly at that 35 watt TDP. I'm going to save and exit. Okay, so now that we've got the BIOS out of the way, we're in performance mode, jumping in here with Windows 11. And as you can see, we've got that Intel Core Ultra 9 288V with this unit. I've been able to test the Ultra 7 265V and a couple laptops, actually my main laptop has that chip. Also, when it comes to something like the MSI Claw 8 AI, that's the chip we've got, but we've got higher clocks on the CPU and GPU with this. Same core count, eight cores, eight threads. We also had 32 gigs of RAM running at 8,533 mega transfers. And remember, with these Core Ultra chips, RAM is on package, so it's actually built into the CPU, and that's why these do cost a bit more. Uh, Wi Fi 7. We've also got access to the Intel AI Boost NPU. 
And of course, we've got the Intel Arc 140V iGPU. Again, this does clock a bit higher than that 265V, so I'm kind of expecting better performance. On the 265V in the MSI Claw 8 AI Plus, 1950 megahertz, but with this, it'll do up to 2050 megahertz. And this thing is really quick. I mean, you wanna do some web browsing, email checking, document editing, just heading over to the Nook site for ASUS. Everything's already loaded up. Just scroll on down here. This chip will handle web browsing, 4K video playback. You wanna do some video editing on this? I would stick to 1080, 60, 4K, 30, or 24. That's really gonna be where it's at with this, but it's totally possible to do so. Photo editing, this chip also works really well with something like Photoshop or even GIMP if you wanna go that route. But one of my favorite applications to test on these Intel Core Ultra chips, uh, or even an Arc iGPU or desktop GPU, is Intel's AI Playground. This is really easy to set up. Download it, it'll automatically download everything for you when you need to use it. So if you wanted to create an image here, It'll download the model in the background for us. We can also enhance images, upscale 1.5, 2.0. Works with Intel Arc GPUs and iGPUs. We've also got access to OpenVINO. We could use DeepSeek. I've already downloaded that. Or Phi 3.5. I'm going to go with DeepSeek. So I've got uh, metrics on, max tokens, 1024. We'll generate. And this is going to utilize the GPU or the iGPU in this case. Other applications can utilize this NPU, and that was actually really quick. Responded in 4.1 seconds. Actually, not that bad. Pretty decent here. Again, we can enhance, but we can also create images. So we'll generate. It should give us four images, but again, it's only going to use that GPU right now. Other applications can utilize the NPU, and recently Microsoft announced that we're gonna get some AI features for paint, like we saw with the Snapdragon chips. Core Ultra Chip should also work with it. I don't know if it's uh, here yet or not. I'll actually look into that in just a bit. It's gonna generate those images for us. All right, so that last one actually looks pretty good. But yeah, I mean, it's here. You can mess around with it if you want to. But the next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks on this thing, and then I wanted to get into some gaming. And while ASUS doesn't recommend this for gaming, I think it's still going to be possible. Here's Geekbench 6, and on that Ultra 288V, we got a single core of 2,855, mold time over 10,000. And at the bottom right there, we've got the 265V, just a lower clock, same amount of cores, coming in with a single of 2,669 and a little over 9,000 here with multi-core. Checking out some GPU benchmarks with 3 d Mark. We've got Night Raid with a 36,819. This is looking great here at a 35 watt TDP. And finally, Time Spy and these Intel Arc graphics, the brand new ones with the 140V, definitely score much higher than most other iGPUs right now. We got a total score of 4,612. But can this transfer over to real world gaming? Let's go ahead and find out. Checking out Borderlands 3, 1080, medium settings, and with this, we don't have any direct access to something like XESS. It would help out, but uh, recently I've been having a lot of issues with this game on iGPUs, and that's kind of why I wanted to test it here. Stuttering with a lot of the AMD iGPUs and even some DGPUs that I've been testing. With this, I do notice it every once in a while, but it's not horrible, and we're seeing an average of around 98 FPS with this game. I actually wasn't expecting to get this much out of it. I also wanted to test out Black Myth Wukong, and with this, I just used the built-in benchmark. We're at 1080, XESS set to 59%, and for some reason, it always just goes down to 59. I usually set it to 60. No frame generation, and we had an average of 71 FPS by the end of this benchmark, which is pretty impressive here for an iGPU at 1080. Marvel Rivals 1080p medium settings with XESS set to balance and this game does support XESS 2 frame generation but I left it off. With it enabled we can get an average of over 100 FPS with it and without it we're seeing an average of around 82 FPS. So with that frame gen enabled it doesn't quite double the frame rate on this little iGPU and without it it's totally playable. 
But uh, there's a lot going on in this game, and once we get into battle again here, because I got absolutely destroyed, you'll see it dip down just a bit. But I never saw it go under 60 FPS. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p medium settings with XESS set to balanced. And I'll tell you, from the initial release of the uh, 140D iGPU, this has increased dramatically with the Intel Arc drivers. I mean, they do a really good job putting out driver updates, but I do wish we had more features built into this game like XESS frame gen. The only thing we have is FSR frame gen. So I really wanted to test it here. And uh, now with frame gen enabled, we're seeing averages over 90 FPS. Kind of figured we'd get a little more out of this. And if you take a look in the top left hand corner, you can see that in some cases, this 288V does peg out at around 40 Watts in this nut. So that's kind of a boost and it does settle on down to around 35 continuously. So far, really impressed with the new ASUS NUT14 Pro, and I will be doing more testing with this. I'd actually like to connect an eGPU over Thunderbolt 4, so if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below. If I was to change just one thing about this mini PC, I would actually add an extra M.2 slot, or even the ability to add a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom like the older Intel NUCs had with most of them that hit the market. Having that single drive is great up to four terabytes, but it would be really nice to be able to do eight terabytes with dual drives in this system. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. If there's anything else you want to see running on the ASUS NUC14 Pro, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.